Hello, how, no, how's it going? That's a fish on, baby. Well, welcome to another episode, guys. We're um, going to head to a beautiful lake now, up way up in the mountains, and we're going to fish for some super alpine trout. The coffee sounds so good right now. <laughs> no dreams about bears. No, no dreams about any of that. Get me out of here. <laughs> Oh yeah, come take a look at this. So that's what we're talking about right there. Yeah, look at this. That was my crib for the night. Oh, and then there's just little, just berries growing all over the place that you can eat. The sun feels just magical. So we're gonna start the day out with making some coffee. And I kind of, I'm hungry too, I want some oatmeal. I figured maybe we can just fish here real quick still before taking off on the, uh, yeah, kind of hard, sketchy hike to the next lake, but it's, it's gonna be beautiful, guys. We're going to one of the highest elevation lakes um, in the state that, that has fish in it, one of the highest elevation lakes with fish in it. And I can't wait to get there. And look at this freaking wonderland I'm in. fuel tablets. When you're in the mountains and you have a water filter, the most important element of life is taken care of right there, and that's having fresh, clean drinking water. Without food, you can survive a long time. Without water, only a few days. While we wait for that water to boil, we're gonna collect some, uh, some wild berries here. Mm. They're essentially wild blueberries. And they grow all over the place at high elevations. Mm. I just used an old cleaned out medicine thing to transport my instant coffee in the mountains. Oh man, look at this. Perfect. Yeah, feels good. Oh, there's fish jumping, guys. Fish jumping. I'm just tying up our uh, bullet lure here. There she is. The good old 25 ACP bullet lure. If you guys wonder why I come up here and put myself through cold nights and sleeping on little mattresses and wet tents, it's because of this. Oh, there, oh, that's a fish. Oh, oh, we lost him. <laughs> Well, that's exactly why we do this. Nothing replaces being up in the mountains, catching your own food out of the lake and picking your 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 fruits off of the bushes. It's magical, man. Hey there, Mr. Spider. What the heck are you doing here? This little guy. Let's get him out of the tent so he doesn't get squished in here. There you go, buddy. We'll give you a, a tree with a bit of a view. <laughs> Okay, I'm definitely seeing the trout surface like right in front of us there. Oh yes, right there. Hey, Mr. Duck, how was your night? Mine was cold. Oh my goodness, a giant trout. Oh, there's a giant trout right there. I can see him in the water. He's swimming right towards the duck. Oh, come on, baby. Ah, oh, we missed him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, he's a big one. He's a really, really big one. About the size of that one that we caught yesterday, if not bigger. Oh, 
man, he wasn't interested. Dang. How about we try right in front of the tent? We haven't even, honestly, we haven't fished the spot at all yet. Looks pretty fishy. Hmm, the site isn't as good as I thought it would be. Maybe we'll just cast out a Carolina rig real quick and I need to make some breakfast. I'm really hungry and then we're going to go to this new high altitude lake that I've never fished before. I'm really excited about it. A little nervous about hiking up there, but I think it'll be okay and it'll be totally worth it and I'm super excited to take you with me. All right, so this is called the Carolina rig. Really simple. You've just got a sliding lead weight on your main line. Then you've got just a little bead right there. Then down to a swivel, down to I've got four pound uh, fluoro as my leader. And the leader is probably about three feet long. Then I've just got a little like a panfish hook down here that we're going to use. I love these guys for uh, trout fishing. The hookup ratio is really, really good with these hooks. For bait, all we're going to use is some power bait. These are just the original trout nuggets. Uh, but we're not going to leave it there. We're going to make this pretty special. We're going to juice it up. Got our worm jar here. Ooh, look at this willing little volunteer right here. We're going to. Just let him play and then just slide those trout nuggets right back onto that worm. And there we go. That's the trout pill right there. So you got your power bait on the top, then you've got the worm wiggling around on the bottom and the trout, they just can't resist it. Where are we going to cast this baby? I think we're going to cast it. I'm thinking we go right out there. That's why I saw a big one swim by earlier. That was absolutely the worst cast I could have made, right into the rocks. There we go. That's where I wanted that. Perfect. So there's rocks essentially all the way around that. So now right in the center, we've got that trout pill floating. And so any trout that are hunting around those rocks, they're going to see that in the middle. They'll smell it. Now we're just going to go ahead and set this pole right here. We're going to want to tighten that line just a little bit. There we go. Then we're just going to attach a little bell right there. That way when a trout bites, we'll hear it. For breakfast, we're going to have a little Quaker oats, banana, walnut, oatmeal. Smells good. Water's almost ready. Ow. It was like a horse fly that bit me on the top of my head. Nice handful of uh, huckleberries that we're just going to Oh man, we're just gonna throw those right in there. Now it's a mountain breakfast, guys. So we're just gonna reheat my coffee real quick. Oh, wait, no, we got a fish, we got a fish. There we go, oh, bell fell in the water. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. Oh, there he is. Oh, he looks like a good one. Oh, oh, he's a good one. Gotta tighten the drag just a little. Oh, I thought he popped off, but he, he ran at us. Oh, there he is, there he is, look at that. Come on, baby. Don't get wrapped up in the, all that grass. Oh, that's a good trout. Oh, that's a really good one, man. Let's go. <laughs> oh, that's a really good trout, man. Oh my goodness. Uh, okay, let's see here. I don't have the net ready. Oh, I do, I do. Okay, I didn't think it was right there. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh man, come on. Come here, baby. Come here, baby. Come here, come here. Oh. oh I, we got him. Look at that fish. <laughs> All right. So we're just gonna bonk this fish real quick just to get him out of his misery, first thing. Oh, come here, buddy. Come here. All right, he's out. 
Um, that way he's not suffering anymore. I know that seems brutal or something, but since we're gonna eat that fish anyways, I wanna make sure that, that his suffering's done. That's a really beautiful rainbow. This one here is a lot more dots on it than the one that we caught uh, last night. Has the adipose fin back there and has a full um, fin up top. So this is probably a wild reproducing fish. This is not a stock trout. Check out who joined us here. It's Mr. Frog. Hey, Mr. Frog. What's going on, bud? How are you doing this morning? He's just chilling. He's been here like for a couple days. Oh, there he goes. Keep in mind that in most alpine lakes, uh, those are actually the native animals to these places. It's not the fish. Fish were actually brought here by mankind in the late 1800s and uh, early 1900s on the west coast. But um, but like what's native here is is frogs and crawdads, little lizards, the insects. So adding the trout is kind of controversial actually, uh, but there's still frogs in these places. It's just, there's not as many as there would be without the fish. So we're helping with the problem. <laughs> so to clean a trout, just start right down there, slice your way all the way up to the head. Ooh, and he has a full belly. Let's take a quick look at what's in his belly. I don't know if you guys saw the last episode, but we were fishing with uh, live dragonfly larva. But that's the, the remains of a dragonfly larva right there. So they definitely do feed on those. And then we just got a bunch of little ants. Look at that. What the heck is that? Some intestinal worm. They're usually in the stomachs. There's no harm in these things. Uh, just make sure you cook your meat. So they're just gorging on bugs up here. Now we're just going to cut out his kidneys. One slice. And then you can just use your finger to push it out. That's a nice clean trout. It's still quite a hike to that next lake. It's gonna be tough, man. I don't even know what time we'll get there. It might be late. Hope that we still have time to fish it, but luckily we have one fish in the bag already. No, absolute way. Does anyone know if that is a cauliflower mushroom? I'm like 98% sure. Ah, oh, it's so shriveled up and dry, I can't tell. Oh my goodness. Oh God, it smells so good. Oh, I think it is, it smells so earthy and nutty. Cauliflower mushrooms are like literally one of the best mushrooms in the world. But man, we're up in the mountains. We can't even, we can't risk to get sick up here and an upset stomach. We're just gonna let this guy be here. This is one of the toughest decisions I've had to make. But it is what's right. Oh, that kills me. That kills me more than like losing a fish or something. If you guys think it's a cauliflower mushroom, it's gonna kill me, but that's okay. what I'm talking about guys. The higher you go, the more beautiful it gets. Oh man. So I've been out for a couple days now. My little satellite messenger and SOS beacon uh, still has like half power. I've been kind of testing that thing. Just remember if you guys are out in the back country like this, always make sure to have some kind of, um, you know, like an emergency plan out. This year is just a last resort. I've got a lot of other plans to get out of here. Uh, then of course have your 10 essentials, all your other gear that you guys need, you know, your food and water. Uh, let people at home know where you're gonna be. But man, for me, this is just like, there's nothing in the world that makes me happier than being out here. Just, just being completely one with nature. Ooh, and way off in the distance there, you can see a giant rock up in the sky. That's where we're heading. Oh, jeez, look at that. Oh my, oh my goodness. Look at that rock. There's a lake at the base of that rock with glass clear water, clearer than you've ever seen before. And with some nice trout in it. So we've still, as you can see, got quite a ways to go. So let's get there. It's gonna be hard and the toughest part is still ahead of us.
Man, look at this lake. That is beautiful. I don't think this one has fish in it. There's a duck. <laughs> all right, we're on the Pacific Crest Trail now. This trail reaches all the way from Mexico up to Canada. How long does it take people? Is it like six months to do the Pacific Crest Trail? It's one of my, one of my dreams is to do the PCT one day. Oh, look at this. I got goose, I've got goosebumps, guys. Guys, I can't believe I'm doing this, like, this is my job. <laughs> All right, guys, you need to meet Moondog and Casper. <laughs> These guys, remember I was just telling you about the PCT, how it goes all the way from Mexico up to Canada? Well, guess what they're doing right now? You just started in Portland, you said? Uh-huh, Cascade, Cascade Locks. Cascade Locks, yeah. Cascade Locks, so they are doing the Washington portion of the PCT. So last year, they did everything except for this section of southern Washington. So I got like 20 miles left and we all wrapped up. And then he's literally hiked the entire PCT from Mexico to Canada. So we, we've got goals. We've got goals. <laughs> yes, it was cool meeting and stopping on the way up. It was like a nice little break too. I'm like, yes, it's a person. Go ahead and follow these guys uh, on Insta and give them some love and follow like more crazy adventures. You can see how this adventure ends for them. If it ends. <laughs> Thank all of you guys for just the love, the support, and um, just just all your good energy. Honestly, like I mean it when I say that I have the best subscribers in the world. Just all of you are just amazing people. Um, every single one of you. I just, I love reading all of your guys' kind comments and um, right here, man, just means the world to me. So thanks. This is the hard part. There we go. So this part here is a little sketchy. You'll see in a second why. A um, couple of risks that we have here at this spot. One is if I slip and fall, it's like a couple thousand feet down. A rock could come falling down and that could whack you in the head. So we just wanna make sure that we're safe. We wanna make sure now that our satellite SOS um, beacon is working. All right, let's do this. Beautiful. Almost there, just the last, last push, man. Last push. <laughs> oh yeah. <sighs> I'm speechless. I don't know if it's sweat or tears in my eyes, but man, it burns. Oh, we finally made it.
We made it. Oh, damn. What do you think? Is this a campsite or, or is this a campsite? Not a single soul out here. We are literally so remote right now that the only thing out here is just animals. I can hear, uh, I can hear marmots way up there in the hills. If it weren't so late, I'd go up there and climb up there to try and find a marmot. Man, this is beautiful. I'm seeing some fish jump already. It's just the most beautiful water ever. Wow. All right, let's go ahead and set up camp. All right, so camp is officially set up. We got the tent all set to go, ready to sleep. It's gonna be a cold night. Uh, got our solar going right there. I've got just a little bit of sunlight left, so hopefully we can charge some batteries before it gets dark. Yeah, we got us a little, got a little, little hangout right here. Look at this, there's, see there's room for one more right here. I'll let you sit right there with me. <laughs> so the marmots are uh, howling around over there. Those chirps that you keep hearing like, ear, ear. There it was. <laughs> oh man, so maybe tomorrow uh, we'll go and see if we can find one of those marmots. They're super just like the coziest little critters ever You don't want to touch them obviously because they could probably bite But they're like not very afraid of humans just because like this is so far out in the mountains that they rarely come in contact with humans So they don't really know what a human is. Yeah, it's it's all right, buddy. Don't worry I think he's telling us to start fishing is what that guy's saying. He's like bro like The Sun's gonna go down like you got to start fishing now So this is my little backpacking uh, rod case. I've got two rods actually with me. I've got the spinning rod right here, the spinning reel, and then I've got a whole fly set up in there as well. It's a little windy right now, so I'm not gonna try with the fly. And as always, I'll just have all the gear links of everything I'm using, the backpacking gear, fishing gear, uh, in the video description below. That way, if you guys are looking for anything, you can pick some of that up. I use like stuff that just works for me and that's inexpensive. I just don't like spending a whole lot of money on gear. Um, do, 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 do. All right, setup's complete. The main line is 20 pound braid, and I've got a little snap swivel, then down to four pound fluoro as the leader. Mr. Bullet Lure. <laughs> now we just gotta catch a fish. Come on with me. Ah, oh, all right. I think what we'll just do is uh, start fishing right here. There's a nice little cove in front of us. So one thing you just wanna make sure on the shorelines here is don't step on like the fragile moss and plants. If possible, always at alpine lakes like this, step on the rock. That way you're not hurting anything. Um, there's just a very fragile ecosystem up here. Oh, there's a fish right there. There we go. First cast with the bullet lure, man. Let's go. Oh, we had to follow. We had to follow. A trout came right after it. Came right up to, uh, I mean, literally right up to the, uh, the edge here. Oh, there he is again. A <laughs> little tiny guy. Tell you what, we're just going to work our way around this way a little bit. Oh, he's right there, literally. Oh, I got the goosebumps. Damn, it literally came over and had its mouth right there behind the lure. Oh man, oh, oh, that got me excited. Beautiful blue color to that trout too. That was on a quicker retrieve too. That I was retrieving really fast there just as an experiment. So let's try that again. Let's go super quick here. 
I mean, these fish up here, they do like chasing something. This here, this looks like a good, good area. All right, so what I just did is I switched the rod over to a Carolina rig, just because like the trout, I'm getting so many follows, but they're, they're not committing. It's like, I don't know if it's just that the water is so crystal clear that they can see exactly what's going on with the spinner. Uh, maybe they're just a little, little bite shy today. I don't know, I'll have plenty of time to try that out tomorrow. But tonight, uh, I just wanted to secure one more fish uh, for dinner. Mm. Man, that smell of power bait is just, it's so chemically good. I don't know why. But that's it right there. That's the trout pill, guys. The trout pill. I'm feeling really confident that this will work out. So I'm just gonna cast that baby out as far as I can. Uh, that's not like crazy far, but you know what? Far enough, about 50 feet out that way. And then we're just gonna set our pole right here. And then we're just tightening the line until we remove most of the slack. It's pretty windy, so we're not gonna get it super tight. Otherwise, we're just gonna drag that weight all the way to us. And then when a fish bites, we'll get that bell ringing and we'll be jumping on it. That's really bizarre. I had reception here. All of a sudden got some text messages. Ooh, Brian invited me to go grouse hunting. Do you guys want to see hunting videos at all? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've hunted a couple times in my life. I'm not like a big hunter or anything. I'm mainly a fisherman. But if you guys want to see hunting, maybe we'll like mix it in a little bit. Oh, we've got a fish on there for sure. Well, I just saw that pole bender uh, right over. Oh, there we go. That's a fish. That's a fish on, baby. Oh, I think he's wrapped around something. Oh, no. Oh, crap. What is he wrapped around? We'll see. Maybe he can swim out of it. We'll give him a little bit of line. That doesn't feel good, man. Oh, crap. Here we go again. Damn it. Ah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh, I don't have any goggles with me, so it's gonna be hard to see what the heck is going on down here. Like a giant tree down there. I don't know if I can get him out of that. I might have to just pull and hope for the best. I can feel him down there. Ah, ah dang, we busted loose. Damn. Ah. That's freaking cold, man. Ah, man, that's a shame. I had no idea there was a big tree right in front of us that we cast into. That was really deep. I was hoping to dive down, but I just, I. Oh, that was deep. So we'll be able to just tie up a new leader, throw it on there, and we should be good to go. Man, I'm feeling like a stinging sensation all over my skin. But it's going to get really cold, so i got to dry off now. I can't put on my clothes yet until I dry off. And uh, once I'm dry, then I have to layer up and immediately warm up. Eat some food here soon, too. Just, to, just so I don't get too cold. Get some body heat going. So I dry off quicker. And I'm warm again. Well, kind of, my head's still a little wet. It's the nice thing about having the short hair is it dries fast. I'm not bummed about losing that fish. I'm just bummed about breaking off gear and like having a fish swim around with that gear in its mouth. That's, that, that's what bothers me the most. Ah, Got a new trout pill on there. There you go.
Oh, do we already have one? No, I think that was the win. <laughs> no, no, I'm pretty sure we have one here, guys. Oh, we've totally got one already. Oh, that's a... F Is that a fish? Do we still have them? That's a fish on, baby. <laughs> we got one. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, fighter. Fighter, that's a fish. Yes. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh my goodness, the colors that he's got. Oh my goodness. Oh man, oh look at him. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh. This is an absolutely gorgeous rainbow trout, man. Dude, I knew that we would still get one here. I couldn't even get the bell on and already we had a trout. Look at this beautiful fish. The colors on this one are absolutely gorgeous. That's one thing I love about these alpine lakes is every lake you go to, the trout will look different. Even though it's a rainbow trout, it still looks different in every lake just because of their diet is different. The temperature of the lakes is different. I just want to put him out of his misery. There we go. He's out. He's no longer suffering. Thank you, buddy. And this guy right here, that's his stomach. So, oh, look at that. We got our, got the power bait inside there. Oops. <laughs> power bait worm. What else we got? Oh, no freaking way. There's a fly in there, like a, a fishing fly. Here, look at this. <laughs> look at that. Unbelievable. Let's go and cut right behind the head. And you just get ripped the whole head off. Look at that. All the guts come out with the head. There you go. That's one clean fish. There we go. So I thought we could add some variety to our cooking. There's some whole grain rice, so it's the good stuff. There we go. But you know what? We're going to do the whole bag. I'm hungry. We're doing all of it. Oof. This is going to be tasty. <laughs> There's a little bit of pink inside there. We're going to throw in some butter and then just some olive oil. Caramelize a little bit of onion. Something about the flavor of fish and onion coming together. It's pretty darn good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start throwing these big guys on there. Oh yeah. Ooh. Man, that's gonna be tough to fit uh, <laughs> all four fillets in there. So let's worry about these big guys first. A lot of people ask me all the time why I leave the skin on and, and if I descale uh, trout before cooking. I love leaving the skin on. It leaves so much extra flavor. Uh, and then the, the scales just add so much crunch. It's like, like a panko crust or something. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. Come on, baby. That is smelling so good. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, perfect. All right, it's definitely time for the main ingredient in this meal, the Danish sea salt. <laughs> so we're just gonna, we're gonna be nice and generous here today. Sweated a lot today, so I'm gonna want some salt. And that's cooked all the way, so we're just gonna kind of Break it up a little. Get all the onion out of the way. Gonna throw in just a little more olive oil. A couple more players going in here. Now, this is about as fresh as it gets. Caught less than an hour ago. This meat here ha has almost like a blue tint to it, which is really weird. Trout shouldn't like turn blue. It's probably just the, the beautiful blue sky kind of reflecting on it or something. Actually, there's a little bit of, no, there's clouds here. So it's kind of a, got a blue tint. I guess. That's weird. And this trout is so fresh it wants to curl. 
it thinks it's already inside a burrito. That's how happy that trout is. He's like, whoo, making the burrito shape. <laughs> I'm gonna take just a little taste of that, uh, that big trout. Here's some skin. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, all that trout is just golden, cooked. I'm getting like raindrops on my head. They made a song about that a long time ago. We're gonna get a little wild here. We're just gonna throw some, some taco blend cheese in there. It has like taco seasonings in the cheese. Cause we're with the rice, we're gonna make a big old trout burrito. Let's see how that rice is looking. Oh, it's looking really good. Check this out, got an avocado here too. I gotta watch out, this knife is still so sharp. That thing will go through my finger just like it went through that avocado right there. Oh yeah. Oh, look at that, the cheese did its magic thing. Oh my goodness, look at that nice crust that we have going on down there. Now what we're just gonna do is steam a tortilla on top of there. We're just gonna finish it off with just a little dab of a, oh geez, tiny little bit of chipotle kicker sauce. We're just gonna try this little guy here. Mm. <laughs> it won't close all the way. Another crazy adventure. What the heck am I doing? Like just going out in the mountains, doing this kind of stuff. I don't know, can you guys still see the mountain up there? It's, it's dark. Mm. It's a delicious burrito. That onion gives it that earthy flavor. The cheese obviously gives it a bunch of just creamy, salty goodness. The avocado gives it the creaminess. The rice just gives it a little bit of sustenance. The fish itself, so much flavor. Mm. Mm. Damn, I got like at least two more of these. <laughs> I'm so hungry, man. Mm, I'm starving. All right, I'm going to go ahead and eat the rest of the burritos inside the tent because it's raining out there now. If you guys are brand new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. Drop a comment below. I'd love to read them. Smash that like button. And we'll see all of you guys in a few days for the next fishing adventure. Till then, you all know it. Fish on, baby.